Joy Lansing was a popular model, actress, and nightclub singer who appeared in the opening shot of Orson Welles' Touch of Evil. She had a secret affair with a young star and almost replaced Marilyn Monroe and Jane Mansfield in two films. Let's take a look at this celebrity from a different era. Modeling at the age of 14 Lansing was born Joyce Renee Brown in 1929 in Salt Lake City to Jack Glenn Brown and Virginia Grace. Her father was a shoe salesman and orchestra musician, and her mother was a housewife. She moved to Los Angeles with her stepfather in 1940. Thanks to her good looks, she was able to start modeling at the age of 14 and get a contract with MGM. Her good looks would also help her find some of her first roles in films. Her film career Lansing got her first role in 1948 when she was selected to perform as a model in the 1948 film Counterfeiters. She was almost 20 years old and didn't really have any acting skills. Film producers didn't care, of course, because they were only interested in her good looks. Lansing was a frequent practitioner of yoga, and she was a devout Mormon. In 1952, she was given an uncredited role in the 1952 film Singing in the Rain, and four years later, she finally got top billing in a film called Hot Cars, which should have helped her become more famous, but instead did nothing because the film failed to garner much attention. Her most well-remembered role was probably as Zeta in the opening tracking shot of the 1958 film Touch of Evil by Orson Welles. Spoiler alert for those who are planning to watch the film, Lansing's character dies at the end of the shot. She's remembered for having uttered the words, I keep hearing this ticking noise inside my head right before she dies. Lansing appeared as Lola alongside actors like Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin in the 1965 film Marriage on the Rocks. She was given the chance to replace Jane Mansfield, one of the most popular actresses at the time, in the 1969 horror film The Ice House, but she turned down the offer and decided to star in a different film. She was also considered for a role in All About Eve, but it was eventually given to Marilyn Monroe. Music Career Wanting to do something other than acting, Lansing decided to give singing a try. She sang in nightclubs in the early 60s, and she was featured in trade magazines. She performed with an orchestra and even toured with Les Paul. Her music career, just like her film career, didn't last very long, and there's not much known about it. She did not release any of the songs she recorded on an album. She recorded a song called Love Me with REO record label in 1957 and some other songs in Los Angeles, but none of these songs were released on an album. She recorded a series of songs in 1962 and in 1965. Cashbox Magazine reported that Lansing was working on an album with RCA Records. The album, which was supposed to be called Joy to the World of Jazz, was never released and there's nothing known about it now. TV shows. While studying at the University of California, she was discovered by a writer from The Bob Cummings Show. She was chosen to play the role of Shirley Swanson in the show, which was also known as Love That Bob. Lansing performed in the show from 1955 to 1959. She also performed as Superman's wife in an episode of The Adventures of Superman. The producers were so impressed with her performance that they wanted to star her as a recurring character on the show, but it was soon canceled. Lansing's best role is thought to be her role in the Peabody Award-winning TV show pilot, The Fountain of Youth. The episode was directed by Orson Welles and can be seen at the Paley Center for Media in New York City and Los Angeles. Lansing had appeared in over 200 TV shows by the end of 1956. Her TV career had perhaps been more successful than her film career because she received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame for her TV work. Her Secret Affair with a Young Star while working on the set of Bigfoot in 1969, Lansing met Alexis Hunter, then known as Nancy Hunter. Hunter, who was only 21 years old at the time, was dressed in a monkey suit on the set when she saw Joy and immediately fell in love with her beautiful looks. Hunter hated the film and later told Fox News, They were gluing hair on my face, spray painting me and applying these fake teeth. It was just awful. And in walks in this unbelievably beautiful human being. She sat right next to me and they did her hair and makeup, and she was so sweet. She was just like anybody. She just happened to be exquisite. Hunter called Lansing the Marilyn Monroe of television. Hunter and Lansing developed a secret bond during the filming of Bigfoot that lasted until the death of Lansing in 1972. Hunter wrote about their friendship in her book, Joy Lansing, A Body to Die For. According to Hunter, the name of the book was a reference to Lansing's obsession with using harmful chemicals and cosmetic procedures to stay young and beautiful. 
which she believes is what eventually killed the blonde bombshell. Lansing was 40 years old and married to her fourth husband, Stan Todd. She kept her relationship with Hunter a secret because people were still against same-sex relationships, but they began living together soon after her first meeting. Hunter pretended to be Rachel Lansing, Joy's sister, for a very long time. She said, if I was her sister, there wouldn't be any suspicion that we were lovers. I really don't know if people ever suspected. Nothing was ever mentioned in the tabloids, and we were seen everywhere together. Death Lansing was diagnosed with breast cancer around 1969 and died of the disease in 1972 at St. John's Hospital, California. Throughout her illness, Hunter was always there for her. She wrote in her book, I loved this woman deeply, and that meant always being there for her, no matter what. She looked after her when Lansing underwent chemotherapy and was there for her when she had surgery two years before her death. It was reported that Lansing was 37 years old at the time of her death, but it was later revealed that she was 43. Lansing could have easily been a star as big as Jane Mansfield and Marilyn Monroe had she taken her acting career a little more seriously. She's better recognized for her TV shows. In fact, if you watched TV a lot when you were little, there's a good chance you might have seen Lansing since she appeared in over 200 shows. What's your favorite film or TV shows by Joy Lansing? Let us know in the comments below and make sure you press the subscribe button.